Whilst it may feel like science fiction, Hyperloop is now on the cusp of becoming a reality. This is the story behind the concept that's about to revolutionize our world. Finally, it's here, inside Dubai's $22 billion Hyperloop. Damn, when they said it was going to be here in a few years, I just didn't believe them. Yet somehow they just secured the $400 million of uh, funding and just made it happen. So quickly, when will I be able to get from San Francisco to LA in 30 minutes? Is that five years out, 10 years out, 20 years out? <sighs> Silly me for calling this out a few years ago as being an absolutely crazy project that would never work. Well, Emily, that's a great question. San Francisco to LA, uh, I'm not sure that's the first route that we're going to be constructing, but I'll make you a commitment that we'll give you one of the first tickets to a Hyperloop ride somewhere in the world. Uh, you'll be able to, to cash that ticket in the year 2021. Wow, 2021, that's next year. I should pack my bags and get ready. So we're planning to have the system available commercially in 2021, and that'll be the first time that people will be able to use the system and travel on it themselves. Oh, what? Wait, he's got more? We get really, really lucky with a country, with a government, with regulators, and with financial backers that want to see this come into fruition, we'll let you punch that ticket in 2020. That's our goal. Three projects right. underway and the first production system by 2020. 2020, Rob, you and I have a date. It's set. I'm going to hold you to it. Wow, they certainly proved me wrong. And now people are releasing videos with millions of hits saying there's a race to build the first Hyperloop. <laughs> Don't you know it's already been done? At that, it's not here. It's nowhere near to being here. And they've not even showed that it's remotely possible yet. Th th that can't be right. Hang on, this is starting to sound rather familiar. Kind of like I've heard this bit. <laughs> Meet Elizabeth Holmes, the fastest self-made female billionaire in history. By 2015, her company, Theranos, was worth some nine billion dollars. A true inspiration to people pioneering disruptive technologies everywhere. She was going to revolutionize medicine. It was going to be 10 times faster than regular blood tests. The system is proposed to travel at an average speed of 900 kilometers an hour. 10 times cheaper than regular blood tests. It's also much cheaper to build. It's about one tenth the cost of the proposed California high speed railway system. This means that tickets could cost as little as $25. It was going to be painless. The Hyperloop could generate more power than it consumes. It was going to be so quick and easy, you could do it in the comfort of your own home. It's also a lot faster. You can basically get from downtown LA to downtown San Francisco in 30 minutes. It was going to be able to diagnose everything from a little patch that you could just wear. And it was going to treat you from that same patch. In 2016, Theranos went from being worth $9 billion to $0. Oddly enough, it seemed that all the stuff that she was promising, it was great. It just had one tiny little problem with it. It never worked. And it took people over 10 years and the best part of $10 billion to work that out. Welcome. Hyperloop has been touted as the fastest way to cross the surface of the Earth. To Theranos version 2.0. Slashing journey times between major cities from several hours to a matter of minutes. Three, two, one, fire. But what exactly is this revolutionary Hyperloop? Hyperloop could see passengers traveling at over 700 miles an hour within floating, modern, and ultra-luxurious pods. Not only is it lightning fast, but it's also quiet. Fast, relaxing, and luxurious? Damn, sign us up. It's widely anticipated that Hyperloop fares will be very affordable, likely even cheaper than both train travel and air travel. Chairman of Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, the company that's pioneering the Abu Dhabi sector, First let me assure you that this is not one of those shady pyramid schemes you've been hearing about. <laughs> no, sir. Our model is the trapezoid. Has stated that any money put into the mega project can be recouped in 8 to 15 years from ticket sales. So ultimately, it's an investment. That guarantees each investor an 800% return within hours of your initial... Uh-oh. The cops! 
Envisioners are confident that Hyperloop will take the pressure off gridlocked roads, making travel between cities easier and potentially unlocking major economic benefits as a result. It's environmentally friendly, it's technologically revolutionary, it's ambitious, and it just might work. Over 10,000 travelers can fit on the system every hour. Now, let's start with the obvious. The idea of running a train in a vacuum tube to reduce the air resistance was patented by Goddard some hundred years ago. There is absolutely nothing new or novel about the concept of the Hyperloop. It's just running a train in a vacuum tube, despite it being claimed again and again that this was all Elon Musk's idea. Sounds like something with Elon Musk written all over it, wouldn't you say? Well, there's a good reason for that. Turns out that the original idea for the Hyperloop came from none other than the Tesla founder himself. When it was first conceived by Elon Musk in 2013, the brand new method of transport brought forth by the entrepreneur and billionaire Elon Musk. But it would be for, for a fifth mode of transport. I have a name for it, name for it which is called the Hyperloop. Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. Elon Musk first described his idea for a futuristic transportation system that would send passenger pods through tubes at speeds of hundreds of miles an hour back in 2013. Since it was first proposed in 2012 by Elon Musk. Tesla co-founder Elon Musk first proposed the idea in 2013 and the first Hyperloop will be built in Dubai by 2021. Saying Elon Musk invented the Hyperloop would be like saying that Elizabeth Holmes came up with the idea of the blood test in 2002. When it was first conceived by Elon Musk in 2013, the idea was deliberately open sourced. One of Musk's many successful companies has made the technology behind the Hyperloop open source so that other companies and institutions are welcome to develop and improve upon the Hyperloop idea. The Hyperloop concept was explicitly open sourced by Musk. Oh, wasn't that generous of uh, Elon Musk to uh, open source an idea that someone else came up with a hundred years before uh, he invented it? Now, the reason that no one's built one of these, these thousand mile per hour railways in the last hundred years or so is bloody obvious. Building large vacuum chambers like this is insanely difficult. <laughs> you know, it's like saying we know how to build bridges. So why don't we just build a bridge over the Atlantic, then we wouldn't have to bother with all those ships. It's like saying, you know, we know how to do a blood test, so why don't we do all blood tests a hundred times quicker and a hundred times cheaper on a single drop of blood? Sure, you can conceive of the idea, but reality is a harsh mistress. So here we are, some eight years on from Elon Musk's vision of the uh, Hyperloop. Now let me just tell you how this idea has evolved. It started off like this. Hey, that's a pretty sweet brand new idea there. But I'll tell you what, add some extra blue lights to make it look super futuristic-y. Boom, perfection. One brand new, never thought of before idea that will completely revolutionize transport as we know it. Now, all I've got to do is lay back to the adoration of the crowd. And shortly later. Oh, what? No one can get the air skis to work. The turbine on the front will have to spin how fast? The vacuum tube will cost how much? Hell, the tube alone will cost a hundred times what I said the entire system would cost. No one can afford that. Now, people won't think I'm a genius anymore. There's got to be a way to save this. Come on, think, Elon, think. Well, 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 what if we just do exactly the same thing but lose the vacuum? That way we don't need to essentially build spacecraft to run at ground level. And of course, they won't be going as fast. The engineering tolerances will be much better. That's brilliant. Pods traveling in tubes. But it needs to look more yeah, futuristic-y. Maybe some blue lights or something. A few genius idea saved. And then, then a few years later, what? It'll cost how much to make those futuristic -y space wagons such that people can have the joy of seeing the dark tunnels they're in? That's crazy. Look, how about, a, how about, how about we just drive cars through the tunnels? I know it didn't seem very futuristic -y, but hey, genius idea. We'll put blue light in the tunnel. Blue light. You've got to have some blue light. Maybe green. Yeah, I think green will work 
just fine. That way, people won't realize that I'm just driving a car through a tunnel. Elon Musk is greeted like a rock star as he emerges from a Tesla in his test tunnel in Hawthorne. Hey, David. Well, Elon Musk saying he thinks he's cracked the code for a better commute, and all of this hinges on this tunnel. Now all we need is a, a clever idea to make this a, a mass transport system. Let's see. We've got, a, we've got a tunnel, and we've got a car. I've got it. We drive lots of cars through the tunnel. Boom, mass transport system. And by a lot of cars, oh, I don't know, maybe eight? For God's sake, someone get this big brain a gold star before before he goes looking for a gas leak with a match and kills us all. And yeah, this, this isn't a spoof. This is what Elon Musk tweeted out, how he thinks that his new, amazing, revolutionary Las Vegas mass transport system will actually look like some cars and some tunnels. And they reckon this will shift about 4,000 people per hour. That's over one person per second, which means they're gonna have to have a full car leaving every four seconds. And as you might expect, and Twitter pointed out some of the more obvious problems with this, like the rough size compression that you would get if you just say ran buses carrying about 50 people in there. Or what if you put a train in there that carried about 500 people, then you would only have to run them every 10 minutes or so. Kind of like a, a regular metro. And meanwhile, enter stage left, inside Dubai's $22 billion Hyperloop. Dear God, I was wrong. This isn't Theranos. This is Theranos on steroids. I mean, this is going to make the money-burning party of Theranos seem like a quaint little balcony barbecue. So let's see what progress has actually been made building the Hyperloop, shall we? I mean, sure, it started off some 10 years ago with all these amazing promises. A tube that would be on pillars from Los Angeles to San Francisco, and inside there would be capsule cars that would be rocketed forward up to 700 miles an hour. It is, it is for perfect travel for those trips, listen to what he says, for up to 1,000 miles. Total bill, including capsule, would be between six and seven and a half billion dollars, about a tenth of the cost of the current plan. Also says it will only cost to build this six or seven billion dollars. Oh. Compare that to the 65 billion for the current high-speed rail plans for California. What else would make it so wonderful? It can never crash. Is a immune to weather, which actually make it self-powering if you put solar panels on it. Musk wants to see this happen, not in the distant future, but now. So but the point about this is, could he do it? Let's not be down in the manger. Let's not be wet weekends about this. I know that there are various companies that are trying to create uh, the Hyperloop. And uh, honestly, I think it's a lot easier than, than people think. <laughs> but it's really not that hard. It still sounds pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's just a low pressure tube with a pod in it that uh, runs on, on air bearings, on air skis. <laughs> the, the, the air bearings were such a great idea that almost 10 years later, no one, no one in the world is seriously pursuing running this thing on air bearings. Everyone has basically gone for an out of the box maglev train. You know, kind of like a, a regular maglev train, but hundreds of times more expensive and difficult to make because it runs in a vacuum tube. What's more, all of the early designs had a fan on the front of the train. Because long story short, there is absolutely no point in having that vacuum tube or low pressure tube if you're not going to have the fan on the front. Because even, even low pressure air will build up in front of the train and basically slow it down. But... Every single modern design has basically ditched it, which means there's basically no point in having the vacuum tube at all. So we come on to the recent videos like inside the Dubai $22 billion Hyperloop. What's the fastest mode of transportation in existence? Air travel, right? Wrong, not even close. It travels 200 miles per hour faster than a Boeing 747 and three times quicker than a Bugatti Veyron. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Hyperloop. Where we get all of the exact promises we got the best part of 10 years ago. Surprise, surprise, that's not even close to true. 
Hyperloop could be cheaper to build than traditional high-speed rail. Sure, this system will slice travel times in half and reduce pollution and traffic congestion on the roads, Hyperloop could provide exceptional economic progress, which is one of the main reasons why Dubai and its neighbors are so excited about it. The entire gulf could become unified, expanding business networks to new heights. Or they just bought $22 billion of Theranos shares. No one has even built a Hyperloop that can take a passenger at all. No one has addressed any of the serious technical challenges of building one of these things, let alone running it. Hell, there's not even been a demo of one of these things approaching its always claimed maximum top speed of a thousand miles per hour or whatever. It's as much vaporware now as it was 10 years ago. The only thing that's changed is the quality of the graphics. But newsflash, just because you can render it in a computer doesn't mean you can actually build one. You know, this is proof that we know how to build a Hyperloop like this is proof we know how to build starships. Oh, sorry, this is proof that we know how to build starships. You know, that can land on a Jovian moon where the radiation would kill you in about an hour or to go to Saturn where the solar panels would have one hundredth of the energy generating capacity that they have here on Earth. Basically, if those solar panels are fit for purpose around the Earth, they are 1% fit for purpose around Saturn. And it's a universal thing that people creating these artists' impressions don't understand fundamental science. It's also extremely energy efficient due to solar power utilization. In fact, the Hyperloop could generate more power than it consumes. So in rendering after rendering, you will find that the solar panels on the Hyperloop are not made to tilt such that they point towards the sun, but are laid down flat, which is how no solar array would ever be arranged because you lose about 30% of your energy generating capacity by laying them down flat like that. You know, this is a constant feature of scams, is computer-generated graphics. I mean, it's crazy. They don't just have computer-generated graphics for things like the Hyperloop, they have it for the Hyperloop Center. Hell, for something that was meant to be here sooner than you think, <laughs> that someone, a passenger, could have at least traveled by Hyperloop. Instead, what, what progress has actually been made? Well, Elon Musk ran some competitions in which the winners were reproducibly small electric cars. Sure, they were fairly fast, but almost none of them got any benefit at all from being run in a vacuum chamber. And they were only just about as fast as current high-speed trains. You know, it's just those minor niggling differences. Like the entire mass of the uh, electric car is made up of motors, and batteries, and it's only got to run for about um, 60 seconds or so, while 0% of its weight is dedicated to transporting passengers. And not that it would really matter anyway, because the whole thing is only about ankle height. Actually, that's not entirely true. Some of the Hyperloop capsule entries, the ones that lost the competition, were designed to take a passenger. I think, you know, what, what this is really all about is Advancing the state of transportation, trying new things that have never been done before. It sounds fantastical, but it's closer than you think, and these students are at the forefront of that movement. Meanwhile, the train is geared up to transporting real people and as many of them as possible. And maybe more importantly, can actually be demonstrated to work. The tunnel, always <laughs> covered in rust, because clearly the geniuses building the Hyperloop didn't quite understand the concept that iron rusts when it gets damp. Then of course there was another one, the Hyperloop 1, which was then bought by Virgin Hyperloop. They built a little test track out in the desert, about 500 meters long. Are we about to witness the Kitty Hawk flight of the future, the train of tomorrow? Roll the video. Here it is. It hits 70 miles an hour, whisking through 500 feet. What started as just a pipe dream of Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk 
just took a gigantic and historic step toward reality. The Hyperloop One has just completed its first ever full scale test run of the high speed train in a tube. And they knew their schedule 700 miles an hour by the end of 2016. That's four years ago now. We broke ground in Nevada. So we're building the test track that'll hit about 400 miles per hour. And then we'll hit 700 miles per hour by the end of the year. Meanwhile, a year after they'd made his, uh, his promises, they hadn't got up to 700 miles an hour. Hell, they hadn't even got up to 400 miles an hour. They got up to a maximum speed of about 240 miles an hour. And that was it. That was their top speed for an empty fiberglass shell just going up and down a 500 meter tube in the desert. Well, almost there, right? Well, no, not really. Firstly, trains are currently functional and carry millions of people per day, safely. This cannot transport people at all. People can't even get into it. There is no door, which is a good thing because this isn't even airtight. This is just a fiberglass shell. If people did get inside it, they would die when the Hyperloop was depressurized. And of course, people can only get in and out of the tube at one end, meaning that they couldn't actually transport people at all. And of course, they only had one fiberglass shell. So when they wanted to sell this as Hyperloop India or something, they just repainted the single pod. Oh, I can feel the technological advances already. Not to be outdone, this competing company decided they were going to make an empty carbon fiber shell. So the interior of the capsule isn't finished yet. They didn't let any cameras inside. Currently, it's a black tunnel. It's waiting to be designed in the next step. We started to manufacture the first full-scale passenger Hyperloop capsule in the world. Production will roughly take one year. In the case of Hyperloop, this could be thought of as a airplane without wings. It's basically a fuselage of an airplane. Oh, it is, of course, a brand new invention. Apart from they've not got any engines on it, no wings, no seats, no nothing. You know what would be utterly ludicrous at the moment? Like, totally preposterous would be to claim that this transport system that doesn't even exist yet is going to be safer, 10 times safer than air travel. A lot of people worry about safety issues. Is this a safer way to get around? The system itself is 10 times safer than an airplane, for example. Then there was Virgin Hyperloop, showing the inside of a tube with, with seats in it. You know, because that's totally what the inside of the Hyperloop would look like. Because if there's one thing that any mass transport system anywhere around the world has taught us, is you want to space out your seats as far as possible to make it look more futuristic -y. So one, when you get onto a Hyperloop system, what we don't want you to do is feel as if you're just on any other mass transit system, because you're not. So what we are trying to do is just reinvent travel the travel experience from the i mean no one bothers no one bothers trying to get lots of people on their mass transport system i mean don't be absurd that would totally ruin the aesthetics of the pod eh, then you might ask some trivial questions like is this pod airtight to which the answer is no it's just a tube with some chairs and disco lights in it now i know what you're thinking haven't i made the odd video on the hyperloop before well, yes, yes, I have. But oddly enough, people keep throwing hundreds of millions of dollars at this. I'm calling this now. This will end up costing people more money than Theranos. And the simple sad reality is I'm almost a voice in the wilderness here. For every video I make like this, there will be 50 that gain far more traction because they promise cheap, easy transport faster than the speed of sound at one tenth the cost of a regular railway. You know, because haven't you heard? This was the brilliant idea of entrepreneur and billionaire Elon Musk. And it's going to be here sooner than you think. You see, this is the problem. True believers really take this sort of thing seriously. They really think that it's going to save the world somehow. And because of this, they cling to computer generated graphics and comfortable promises. And ideas that really don't stand even the most minor levels of critical scrutiny. Instead of going with the solution that was already worked out about a hundred years ago. So yeah, I, I figured this was worth another video.
So uh, with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate it if you drop a thumbs up on the video. And as always, if you really appreciate the work of this channel, you can support it directly through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.